<laughs> George says, take those diamonds out of here. Diamond forever, huh? Creed forever. This is Creed here. Creed forever. Diamond forever, huh? He doesn't have a big fan club here, let's face it. I mean, these guys are rooting for the French guys. Creed forever. <laughs> As we've seen here in Paris, the game of poker draws players from all corners of the globe. Earlier, I had a chance to speak with George Padovoisakis, and I discovered that he's a player who's truly traveled further than most. I'm almost 40 years married, and I have three daughters and two grand. two grandsons. Family is the most important thing in life. I was born very poor, homeless. So for what I have achieved, yes, I'm, I'm blessed by God. What I'm telling you comes from my heart. He may be humble, but don't mistake the mild manner. Share a table with George the Greek, and he may just break more than plates. Yes! Poker, it's a battle. It, you have to fight. That's me from the island of Crete. But in a game that requires emotions to be in check, is it possible for George the Greek to be too passionate? No, I don't accept that. I, I don't accept that. It does definitely affect his play. In poker, it's better to be calm and relaxed, and you can see things better. I was born in the island of honor. If you say something, you have to do it, no matter if it will cost you. So if the right word is passion, then I accept. Well, here we go right back in the next hand. This time it's going to be on David, who looks like he just got an ulcer from that last hand. And this time he's got a pair of fives, Mike. Yeah, he's picked up two fives on the button. Nice hand in a three-handed game, and he's going to raise it. He comes in for 24,000. 24,000. Jean Boubli has seven, six of spades. And he folds. Yeah, yes, he does. Up to George, who's got a pair of tens this time. Mm, monster hand, the big blind. George, you're doing it. I go all in. He goes all in. Oh, bravo. Great forever. Great, great forever, Mike. And now look at David Benjamin. Great forever. This is going to cost him another 100000 if he wants to play this pot. David Benjamin looks like the Temple of Doom all of a sudden. Well, I'll tell you, if he calls and loses this pot... I mean, it'll be a quarter million dollars that goes into George's stack here. What a nice little roll for George. Now he notice how confident George looked when he was banging those chips in. That's what David's looking at right now. Well, David's starting to look like he's being tortured. You know, David's got two fives here. He's a commanding chip leader. What a turn of events here, happening so quickly. Does he want to gamble with the two fives here? The way George looks, you know, what to do, what to do. We know he's got way the worst hand, but assuming George would just have two overcards, it would be like even money who would win this pot. That's what Dave was thinking about, but he also saw how confident George was slamming that money in the pot. Look, he shows the fives and lays them down. That's a tremendous lay down by what David. What a great lay down right there by David Benjamin. I'm telling you, Vince, most guys would call with two fives there. In a flash. George made a mistake there by getting too overconfident, banging those chips on the table. It was a tell in David's mind that he had a powerful hand. He indeed did have good lay down, good read by David Benjamin right there. That shows me he's a great player. We are seeing some great action here. We'll be right back with more action from Paris here on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the Aviation Club in Paris, France, on the World Poker Tour. I'm Vince Van Patten. And I'm Mike Sexton. It's good to have you with us. 
And don't forget, George was hanging by a thread just about an hour ago, and he has come back in a big way. Well, David Benjamin still has a nice chip lead over both his opponents, but he's sort of on the downward slide, and they're on the uphill slide, so they're going the right direction. He's heading the wrong way right now, but still has a commanding chip lead. Back on the chip leader, David Benjamin. He's looking at 6-3 now. Not going to play. Pass to David. Here's Jean Boubli picking up a pair of fours against the blind, so we know he's going to play, just no matter what he's going to do. Oh, he's going to raise. Dentist going to make a raise here. See how much it is. 33,000. 33,000, he makes it. George takes a squeeze at a Jack Tan he sees. All in. All in, he goes with a Jack Tan off suit. Brave raise here by George. 121,000. Right back at Jan Boubli. Well, now he has put Jean Boubli to the test right here. Oh, he's put him on the diving board. What a bold move by George right here. He's going to throw it away. He throws it away. And let's see if George shows him the hand. He does not. What a beautiful steal there. Well, that was a great move by George. And an interesting lay down by Jan Boubli right there. Well, Mike, it has been a great week here so far, and I'll tell you something, it's always so much fun, not just to come to Paris, but to also be able to hang out inside this amazing club. Oh, you're right, Vance. It's a treat for us to be here and for our audiences to get to peer inside the Aviation Club de France. Shauna Hyatt has more on just what it's like to be a member of the club. Unless you're looking for it, you can pass right by the Aviation Club of France. Old-fashioned discretion remains a hallmark here. Once inside, you enter a time machine. This is an elegant throwback to days gone by, when tuxedos were mandatory and the high rollers rubbed elbows with the rich and famous. We had and we still do have famous people that come in. Until poker started, uh, everybody was wearing suit and tie, except for the month of August where the tie could come off. By special permission of the French government, the World Poker Tour is the first outside organization to ever be granted access to the club, a record that goes back to its founding. The club started in 1908, created by aviators after the war to help orphans and widows of pilots. They started by doing gambling tables and raising money from that and helping them with their lives. The bartenders still mix their drinks with a flourish, and the restaurant serves up a five-star menu, sure to satisfy the most discriminating palate. I think there is a rule. I can eat each plate of the customer. If I can't eat, I don't sell. It's the rule of the game. When you serve somebody here, it's like for you. After the war in 1945, when it moved from across the street, it was only gambling, but nothing else more to do with aviation. We just kept the name and the pictures. But after all this time, people still call for flying lessons. You can get lessons here, but it's not going to be in flying, and it could get very expensive. All right, back in action. Well, Mike, what I love to see here is George is taking control of this game. He is playing best at the table at this point. I love it that he takes that hand with Jack-10. Well, the action is on, George. Action on George. What's he going to do this time? He looks at an ace seven. Ace seven of diamonds. All in. He goes all in. He goes oh, all there in. There he goes again. 130,000 he bets all in. But look at this. David Benjamin, he's hit a wall. He's oh. got the pair of aces. It's called. My John Folds. Unbelievable. The dream situation. Your opponent moves in and you look down and find two aces in the big blind. This could spell disaster for George. Oh, you can't be in much better shape. It's two aces versus ace seven. You're probably a 90% favorite to win this pot. Remember last time he had ace jack against king jack. He lost. Here comes the flop. See the first three cards. Flop come. Eight, seven, four. Now he got a seven, but he needs an absolute miracle here. He's going to have to catch two running diamonds or another seven. Still in the lead. Let's see the fourth street. Hey, there's one diamond. He's got one diamond. He's oh, my a golly. A little diamond. chance. He can win this pot with a diamond or a seven. Right now, he's a tremendous underdog. 
He's done it. Look, oh, it. He did it again. I can't believe it. This. It this is unbelievable. This, folks, is unbelievable. It's an ace seven against two aces. George the Greek has come back and defeated two aces here. You talk about legends happening. Unbelievable. Our very eyes. He's yeah. got Nick the Greek. Now we got George the Greek. He's, this is amazing. He's got more lives than a cat. I'm telling you. It's unbelievable. Oh, man. <laughs> What a tremendous outro. Incredible, George. I killed the aces. <laughs> yes, you did. They are shocked outside. Well, I mean, that is unbelievable. Now, that does shock you. That's the fourth ace on the deck. Unbelievable. The man moves all in front. You pick up two aces. The dream scenario. He turns up his hand. He's got an ace in his hand and a seven. And you lose to this hand. That's an incredible beat. Now, you talk about fate. Unbelievable fate right there by George the Greek to win that pot. To double up right there, what a blow to David Benjamin and to Jean Boubli both, who now have a real tiger on their hands. We'll be right back with more from Paris here on the World Poker Tour. You've got to have control, you've got to have good money management, and you've got to try and stay ahead of the game. Stay ahead of the game it means you've got to be one step ahead of your opponents. Tour from Paris. Vance, we are getting down to it, and chip position plays a vital role in the game now. You're right, Mike, and let's go down there and check the chip tally right now. And right now, the match has tightened up considerably. Now, David still has a good chip lead with about 525,000. Jan believe with about 210, and George with about 230. Back into action here. David's going to make a nice raise with the king nine of hearts here. So David's been wounded, but it doesn't slow him down. He raises again. Jan Bubli going out with Queen 10. Jan folds in the small blind. And George has picked up a suited connector, 7-6 of diamonds. I call. And, and George calls. calls. Right now, he yeah. thinks he's riding the, the Greek white horse there. Well, he knocked out a pair of aces last hand. Can he pull off another miracle here? Here comes the flop. This is an ace, a tray, and a deuce. Two hearts. David's got four hearts to his hand. The nut flush draw, as we say, is what he has. George, George doesn't has nothing. have much, no. George is first to speak. George, don't go crazy on us, though. Check. He checks. All in. Check. David's going to fling all in. Quickly goes all in. It's tappy in French. Now, there's no way George is going to call this. He's got a 7-6. He's just planning to make it look like he's got something for the next hand. It's like you argue a call in baseball. I guess he just wants to see David sweat. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so he's even going to torture him when he's not playing a pot. Look at this. Oh. Are those tears David wiping out of his oh, eyes up there? Oh, look at this. <laughs> Put the violin on. <laughs> he might need the visine here if he takes some more beats like them last two. Nice bet by David. He's going to take that pot. Well, that's the drama doesn't get much better than this on the World Poker Tour. This is amazing action here tonight in Paris. We're seeing great poker, Mike. We're talking about a $357,000 euro first prize. Back in action on our man Jan Boubli, the dentist from Paris. And look at this. He picks up two kings. Oh, a monster. Vincis. Two Kokomos, <laughs> two Cowboys. 26,000. He is raising strong. 26,000. And it's on George the Greek now. George looks down. Now he finds an ace 10 of diamonds oh, that's here. A pretty strong hand, too. What is he going to do with this? All in. He's gone all in. Yes. George goes all in. Uh, David quickly George? folds his hand. I close. And Jan quickly calls. He can't he wait to get his money in the pot with the Kings. George taking the plunge here. This could be it. And once again, George has way the worst of it. Can he do this again, Vince, and stay alive? Oh, the water is rising around the island of Crete. Vince, I got to tell you, I get the feeling that 
George is trying to ride a bike up Mount Everest here. Every time he gets his money in the pot, that's what it feels like to But me. he may get lucky. He still has that shot with the ace, of course. They're stacking up their chips. This could be it from a man from Greece.